Why is your cat not eating? Possible answers and what to do about it, coming up next on Nine Lives to Live. Many of us have seen our cats stop eating, and it can be quite worrisome. Last week my cat Mr. Muffin stopped eating and forced me to look into it. So in this video we're going to take a look at some of the reasons why cats stop eating and what to do about it. My name is Francisco, and on this channel, Nine Lives to Live, we take a look at how to improve the lives of indoor cats. I work with my three cats, Mr. Muffin, Skyfall, and Calypso. So last week Mr. Muffin stopped eating. The one night he had diarrhea, and then the next day he slowly stopped eating over the day. He started nibbling at the edges of his food. He stopped uh, trying to eat everybody else's food, which is a big habit of his if I don't keep him away from them. So I knew we had a problem. First I thought, let's run through some of the possible non-medical problems. Although the fact that he had had diarrhea made me think the problem was probably medical. Here are five non-medical reasons why your cat might stop eating. Number one, you've moved the bowl. Maybe you've put it in a place that doesn't feel comfortable for your cat. Number two, make sure that the bowl is clean. Some cats don't like the smell of old food and they won't eat it if the bowl isn't super clean. Number three, maybe you changed the food to something your cat doesn't like. You might have to go back to feeding your cat something it does like uh, because it's a, it's a type of hunger strike for cats, saying, feed me something I like, please. Maybe the food is cold. Uh, as fall comes on, uh, I keep my food in the pantry, which is cold, and so the food tends to get cold. Maybe the cat doesn't like cold food. Reason number five, maybe your cat is bored with his food. And this is another type of hunger strike, saying basically, come on, feed me something a little bit more interesting, and then I'll eat it. So, are any of these possibilities? Well, not for Mr. Muffin. I didn't change the position of his bowl, it's been the same. His bowl is cleaned after every meal, so that was not it. The food was a good temperature. If uh, it got cold, I would heat it up in the microwave. I didn't think he was bored with his food, but I tried giving him a little bit of uh, treats, turkey treats, which he loves, and uh, they don't get very often but he wouldn't have those either. It was something else. On day two, Mr. Muffin stopped eating altogether. So I assumed it was some kind of medical issue, but I decided to give it a little bit of time just in case it was just an upset stomach because of something that uh, he ate, some bug or something that he shouldn't have. Fortunately, he was acting normally. Uh, he was just not eating. I considered that it might be tooth pain or mouth pain but he is too old to be teething and he's too young, about a year old, to actually be having tooth decay problems. That's another common cause for cats not eating. On day three, he still was not eating and now he was not even playing. He was just sitting around looking lethargic. I tried to coax him with some food and treats, but he was having none of it. In fact, he even started backing away from the food if I put it too close to him. A more immediate concern was that he wasn't drinking. Uh, because he gets only wet food and gets most of his moisture from his food. Cats need to eat and drink uh, because in a few days, if they don't, they can get other complications, liver problems and urinary tract infections and so forth, which complicate the, the situation. So, Mr. Muffin, not eating, not drinking, lethargy, stopped grooming himself. It's time to call the vet. Okay, a disclaimer here. I'm not a vet and this is not medical advice. I suggest that you take your cat to the vet when uh, they have problems. Uh, that's what I do with my cats. Fortunately, I got an appointment for the next day. While waiting for the appointment uh, the next day, I did do several things. One, I checked uh, for possible poisons. I checked under the sink uh, for the cleaners that are there. I checked in the workshop for the paints and varnishes just to see if anything had been broken into, if there was any possibility that he could have gotten into any of that stuff. But everything looked normal. There was nothing broken open. There's nothing in disarray. I checked the houseplants. It didn't look like any of them had been severely attacked. 
Because he had stopped grooming, I also decided to help Mr. Muffin with his diarrhea. He wasn't completely clean. Mr. Muffin has very long fur and sometimes he has troubles cleaning himself. And now that he was lethargic, that was even worse. So I worked on him in the back bathroom. Uh, he was quite energetic in protesting this unusual treatment, which actually um, gave me some encouragement because of the energy with which he protested uh, his um, pseudo bath. Okay, Mr. Muffin, stop. Stop. Not so bad. Not so bad. Um, obviously, I have to put him down because he's latched onto my back. Okay. But in the end, uh, I got the job done, uh, although with a bit of a struggle. I'm just trying to help you out. I also read that uh, eating a small toy or string can cause a problem. And uh, so I decided to check his belly gently to see if it was tender down there. It didn't seem to be a problem, but um, problems with the digestive tract, getting something lodged in there, something blocking can be a problem. While waiting for the vet appointment, I also worried about dehydration. It's been, it had been about three days now since I saw him uh, drinking. So I decided to try to get a little bit of water into him with a plastic syringe. The way to do that is to fill the, the plastic syringe just a little bit put it, um, squirt a little bit onto his tongue, not onto the back of his throat, and keep him standing or sitting upright, not on the, his back like a baby. Uh, that might cause aspiration, which would not be good for him. Do it several times so that he, get, he gets um, a few cc's of water into him. So finally, the appointment with the vet came. Uh, he examined him and he thought it was either a virus or a bacteria that he had picked up. Big surprise to me. In fact, I didn't even know the cats could uh, get those things if they didn't go outside. So here is what I learned. Number one, cats can catch viruses from outdoor cats even if they never go outside. You bring them in. Because they have never encountered some of these viruses and bacteria, they have no resistance to them. You can transfer these viruses, bacteria from outdoor cats to your cats just by coming into contact with them. Maybe picking up uh, some old poop or something on your shoe, maybe by petting your neighbor's cat. All of these ways uh, are ways of bringing in the, the virus into your house. And because cats are on the floor, they smell your shoes, they smell the carpet. If you touch them with your hands, these are all ways that um, your cats can pick up bacteria, viruses from outdoor cats. So, um, wiping your feet well outside in the outdoor mat, washing your hands before you pet them. If you've petted a cat from the neighborhood, then um, these are some ways to protect your own cats from catching these things. The vet pointed to the fact uh, that Mr. Muffin was smacking his mouth uh, as a sign that he was nauseous. Uh, he also tested him for dehydration, uh, which is the way that the skin snaps back. Uh, he pinched the skin on the back of his neck and it snapped back well. He said he was not dehydrated, that if he was dehydrated, the, the skin would tent instead of snapping back quickly. He also did say that it was important to get some food into him. So this is what uh, he did. Number one, he gave him some medicine, an injection to reduce his nausea. He said this would allow him to start eating a little bit it would only last for 24 hours, but it would get him over the hump. He also suggested that I feed him baby food, um, Gerber or something else that babies eat that's in a puree form, uh, try chicken or something that he might like, um, put it a little bit on the side of his mouth, his mouth and he would start licking it off and then he might eat a little bit more. He also prescribed an antibiotic uh, for me to give him orally um, in case it was a bacteria. So I took Mr. Muffin home, and then I went to the store and bought the things I needed. Mr. Muffin decided to stay in the carrier, and he would not come out. I waited three hours for the medicine to kick in, as the vet had suggested, and then I tried feeding him a little bit. And Mr. Muffin did start licking some of the pureed uh, baby food off my fingers. So I was very happy about that.
I got about half a teaspoon into him, which I thought was good for the evening. The next morning I did the same thing and he ate a little bit more. I also gave him his first dose of the antibiotic, uh, just filled the syringe to the line that the vet had marked and squirted it into his mouth. Uh, fortunately, I got most of it into his mouth, so um, I think that'll, that's going to work out okay. I have to give that antibiotic until it runs out to give him the full course of the medicine. The next morning, he came out of his carrier and started sniffing around. He later in the day started eating a little bit, not very much, but enough to make me think that he was on the road to recovery. And now he's eating normally again, he's running around and playing and being his usual obnoxious self. So why did my other cats, Scalypso and Skyfall, not get this virus or whatever it was? Probably because they had already come in contact with it. They, I, got, I adopted them from uh, underneath the neighbor's deck and uh, they were part of the commu cat community uh, around here when they were babies. So they had probably already come into contact with whatever it was that was bugging Mr. Muffin. So there it is. Mr. Muffin had the stomach flu and it's solved with the help of the vet. Thank you very much. I hope this video helped you. If you like the content, please subscribe or take a look at some of the other videos. You'll find them above the wagging tails or in my channel. Um, also press like if you thought this content was valuable to you. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.